Okay, well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Chris Cooney, and today I'd like to tell you about some work we've been doing in Sheffield in the UK to try to understand a bit more about uh, the evolution of bill morphology in the birds. So, I think that many of us are quite familiar with the idea of uh, the avian bill as a hugely flexible tool used by birds to exploit a wide range of ecological resources. However, I think what's less clear is exactly how this feeling to diversity is evolved. In particular, is it the product of simply gradual divergence over time, or has there been a more complex process of frequent phenotypic jumps and shifts in the evolutionary rate, which has given rise to this diversity? So one way in which people have traditionally tried to get at this question is by using linear morphometric measurements of bird builds. <coughs> However, the extent to which this approach is able to capture the huge range of diversity in avian builds that we observe is, is unclear. So one of the initial aims of our project was firstly to provide a new perspective on bill shape evolution by combining a geometric morphometric approach based on 3D scans of bill structure and combine that with multivariate models of trait evolution. And so first I thought I'd, give, I'd try to give you a little insight on what it's actually like to 3D scan a bird. And it actually turns out all you need is a 3D scanner in a bird. <laughs> so scanning can happen by resting a bird on a table like the shoe bill, or if you're really unlucky like this puffin, you get jammed in a cheap plastic tube and spun around. But the end result of both of those approaches is that we end up with a very detailed model of the bird's bill. And although this has turned out really terribly, this is actually, actually a lesser frigate bird bill, and we, we can apply this 3D scan approach to virtually every bird species to generate very high resolution morphometric data. And so to turn these 3D scans into morphometric <coughs> data, we place a series of landmarks on the surface of the bill, in our case, just on the upper mandible. And this consists of four fixed landmarks placed at homologous points on the surface of the bill, and then 54 sliding semi-landmarks, which describe uh, the dorsal ridge and the two sides of the bill. And so by doing that, for a sample of over 480 species, to capture the extremes of bill morphology and also so we have every avian family represented. We find that uh, most evolutionary change in bill morphology involves changes in their relative length, width and depth of the bird bill. And what I mean by that is at one end of the axis we have bills that are long and thin and at the other end of the axis we have bills that are short and deep. But actually on other axes we find that um, other axes capture more extremes of bill morphology, which involve primarily non-linear changes in shape. And actually, each of these axes capture or produce shapes that tend to remind us of particular groups or species that we're familiar with. <coughs> There's a duck. <laughs> and so when we plot the morphous space based on this data, we find that um, particular clades here, such as hummingbirds over here, and parrots tend to occupy very distinct areas of morphous space relative to other groups. And when we plot the phylogeny on top of that, we can really start to get a sense of the evolution and processes underlying this pattern. For instance, uh, here we see a clear basal divergence in bill morphology occurring at the, the basal divergence between swifts and hummingbirds. And if we do this for more axes of shape variation, we find other interesting patterns. For instance, here we see ducks and geese have diverged into a very distinct area of morphous legs, which has involved uh, an ancestral lineage is diverging into that area of morphous legs, and then the whole plate radiating, radiating within that area. And we can keep doing this for other axes of shape variation, and we can find other, in, other interesting patterns that start to really give us a sense of the evolutionary processes underlying the variation. So in this context, we can then ask again, how is this diversity evolved? Is it simply a case of gradual divergence over time? Or have there been um, subclade shifts in evolutionary rate? Or perhaps um, single, lineage, single lineage jumps and shifts giving rise to large differences in the time? So to put that another way, has avian build 
evolution been characterized by constant, a more or less constant rate of diversification over time? Or have there been whole clade shifts in evolutionary rate? Or perhaps uh, ancestral lineage shifts in rate? Or very recent shifts in evolutionary rate amongst recently diverse species? And so to formally test these ideas, we can use the phylogeny to fit a series of multivariate models of trait evolution using the model language in R. They differ in the extent, that, that differ in the extent to which they allow uh, evolutionary rates of real evolution to um, vary across the tree. And what I mean by that specifically is we can test whether models of constant evolutionary rates provide a more parsimonious explanation for this variation in build structure across the evolutionary tree. Do they provide a more parsimonious explanation for that than more complex models in which major ape, major ape clades or highly divergent lineages are permitted to have their own evolutionary rates. <coughs> when we do that, we find that constant rate, simple constant rate models like uh, the brain and motion model and Lam the lambda model are vastly disfavored uh, in comparison to models incorporating rate heterogeneity. So this allows us to soundly reject the idea that um, avian bill shape evolution is characterized by a simple constant rate process. And in fact, we find the most strongly support for the most complex model involving all three types of rate heterogeneity. And what that looks like when plotted on a tree is a process of gradual phenotypic divergence interspersed with uh, instances of evolutionary births and also slowdowns affecting whole clades and uh, single lineages right from right across the uh, avian radiation. But it's possible to break this rate heterogeneity down a little further. So first, by concentrating on subclade speedups, we find several instances of uh, speed of uh, rate shifts across the avian phylogeny, including familiar examples such as the shorebird clade, and the Madagascan bangers up here, and also Darwin's finches. However, if we switch focus to focus on internal branch shifts, Again, we infer several cases of very large phenotypic jumps, but we find that these phenotypic jumps occur solely within the non fossil rate clade. So, for instance, we find uh, very large jumps in the stem branches leading to ducks and geese, and also to hummingbirds and to swifts. And again, if we focus then on um, <coughs> shifts in evolutionary rate, we find that some of the most extreme avian bill morphologies are generated by single species shifts in bill morphology, but again, only occurring with a non the non passerite radiation. So, if we summarise these results in terms of um, estimated in terms of estimated phenotypic change, what we find is what we find is frequent. Um, large jumps in phenotype occurring within the non-passerine radiation, whereas in contrast, in the passerine, we find a pattern of more steady divergence, apart from a few small or relatively recent clades in which rates of evolution are increased. And so, some conclusions, there are three, three main things I'd like to point out. The first is that I think these results suggests that in general, avian bill shape evolution can be best understood in terms of a process of growth divergence interspersed with bags of rapid evolutionary divergence. However, the most substantial shifts in uh, bill morphology occur within the non passerine clade. Whereas in contrast, in the non passerines this pattern of basal divergence to extreme bill morphologies underlying the base of big radiations tends to be lacking. And finally, I'd like to suggest that uh, these results really do help to cement the idea of the, or cement the view of the avian bill of a hugely adaptable tool that's been repeatedly used by birds to open up new ecological niches and facilitate continued uh, species diversification across their evolution. And with that, I'd like to finish there and thank um, Gavin Thomas and Jen White, who are based in Sheffield, and also the rest of the team who are based at the Natural History Museum in Trim, just outside of London, where most of this data has been collected. Um, 
finally, I'd like to finish with a very cheeky plug of our new crowdsourcing website, um, which you will get, you'll be able to access very soon through our lab, web, lab website here. Because we've now scanned over 3,500 species of birds from over 70% of avian genera. So if, you're, if you do really like birds and you want to see what their beak looks like in 3D, um, please do check out our website. And with that, I'd like to say thank you and I'm happy to start with you.